Uh, case on our uh, docket tonight is case number 1805, uh, 119 Salem Street. I'm going to go ahead and uh, read the notice into the record and handle a couple of uh, preliminaries. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, on Wednesday, May 16, 2018, at 7 p.m. on the application of MBA Building Group pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A Section 9 for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 7.2 to demolish the existing three-family dwelling and construct a new two-family dwelling on the property located at 119 Salem Street, Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list except to say that the abutters were notified as were the appropriate boards and commissions in town, in departments, members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of the surrounding communities. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you think you may want to speak on this case, even if you're a member of the public, please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn. That includes the applicant. I swear the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The response is I do. I do. I do. do. Okay. Uh, we'll let the applicant have the floor. Great. Uh, for the record, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. The owner could not be here tonight, but the builder uh, from MBA, Keith or Lizzie, is here um, to answer any questions you might have. But I thought I'd kick off um, the night and give the board an overview of what's looking to be done here. Um, properties at 119 Salem Street, as the chairman stated, it's an existing three-family uh, dwelling. Um, they're proposing to raise the three-family dwelling and construct a two-family townhouse style dwelling. Um, the property, the existing home was built in 1920. It's on the list of historic homes in the town of Reading. Uh, MBA worked with the historical uh, commission um, and coming up with the design for this house. It was under a demolition delay. It's been released now from the demolition delay. Um, but they tried to incorporate a lot of design features that the Historical Commission was looking for in, in the architecture and the look of this dwelling. Uh, the lot itself is in the S15 zoning district. Uh, the lot consists of 17,031 square feet. The minimum requirement for the S15 district is 15,000 square feet. The lot frontage for this lot is 96.5 feet. Uh, the requirement is 100 feet in this district. As far as other zoning aspects, as far as the front side and rear setbacks, the proposed structure meets all those. Um, the minimum requirement is 20 feet. We have 21.7 on the front. The minimum side is 15. We have 16.5 at the closest point. And the minimum rear setback is 20. We have a little over 92 feet to the rear setback. The maximum lot coverage in the zoning district is 25%, with the buildings, decks, and front porches where it's 17.3. Um, to go over the site plan, what we tried to do in this design is the proposed two family. We tried to uh, locate the building in a similar location as the existing building. Um, the driveway that comes in on the right side of the property will be still utilizing that driveway on the right side. And to try to reduce um, the look of pavement out front, um, the driveway will go out back and there'll be two car garages under on the rear of, of, of this property. So that allows additional green space in the front. Part of meeting with the historical commission was we wanted to show landscape features in the front, green space, we show plantings. Um, Another thing is right now the existing foundation is a field stone foundation. Um, to the left of unit one, dwelling unit number one, um, we're going to reuse some of that granite in, in the retaining wall. Um, so that it is a visual feature for us. Um, I believe it's pretty straightforward, especially where we're going from a three family to a two family. Um, Keith is here if there's questions on the architecture, but uh, basically each unit will be a three bedroom unit. Um, each unit will be about 2,200 square feet. Um, the existing three family is just a shade under 2,800 square feet. The town records have it as 2,797 square feet. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to the board for any questions they might have. Great. Thanks, Jack. Uh, 
Uh, what we'll do next is uh, open up the matter to board comments and questions, uh, discussion, and uh, then we'll open up the public comment to any members of the public that would like to speak, uh, and then we'll go from there. So uh, we'll start with Nick. I had a question for the board. Um, based on the table of uses, if we were even allowed to grant a special permit for something like this. I have the same concern. Uh, I don't know, if, I, I wasn't able to see from the uh, property record how far back the three family use went. Uh, does the applicant know? We had records from the building inspector in the 80s that it was a three family. Um, uh, we have a letter from the previous building inspector that, that, it, yeah, uh, that it was a three family. Um, I don't have a letter off the top of my head, but that was from the late 80s, saying that it was a certified three family. Um, it's been used as a three family um, all the way up to probably uh, beginning of this year. And I do have I do have the assessor field card. It shows number of living units three. Um, but we're, we're looking to reduce it to two. And even under the general bylaw that where this house was built in 1920, there's something in there. If you have more than eight habitable rooms, it can be converted to a two family. This says 11 rooms. Uh, and, and if we're making, if it is a three family, we're making it two, it's, it's less dense than, than they say I saw it. It's been, it's been done by this board before. The uh, instances where it's, <clears throat> where it's been done is where the, the existing use was legal. And a conversion was granted based upon the, meeting those, uh, those factors. So we want to, I think, keep in mind as we go through this, uh, the use of the property as it exists today. Um, the way I, I the way I look at it, I think, is um, any use of this property is non-conforming because of the lot size and the, and the lack of frontage. So it's already a non-conforming lot in terms of size and frontage for an S15 district. It's only non Chairman, it's only non-conforming in relation to lot frontage. Oh, frontage, sorry. Yeah. Okay, frontage. Um, so, uh, so with regard to frontage, it's still a non-conforming lot in that regard. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll leave it up to board discussion. I mean, I'm not the the sole arbiter, but but Nick does bring up a, a valid point for discussion. I think as we go through this, Any, anything anything else while we keep that on our on our radar screen? That's it. That's okay. What I have. Um, Robert. Uh, yeah, uh, look, looking at the property and uh, looking at it, my, my thoughts on this were that it's a uh, uh, legal non-conforming lot and that it, uh, it, it's just, the front is just less than 100 feet. I think we've gone through that. <coughs> it, it's use. Uh, I considered myself to be grandfathered uh, non-conforming. Number one, three family, we've heard tonight, it's possibly been since the uh, 80s at some point. Uh, I think if it's unenforced there for a certain period of time, I believe it's 10 years, uh, it becomes, uh, I don't know if the right word is legal, but- uh, Accepted. An accepted use. Now that's, that's a good word. Uh, and they are uh, looking to uh, downsize it to a two-family instead of a three-family. Uh, I like the idea that uh, I did not, I was not aware that it was registered with a historical uh, Yeah, nothing, nothing in here that mentioned Nothing it. in yeah. here. But I, I do like the idea that they did go and uh, discuss it with them and uh, on that. And uh, I think they, uh, I don't know if they have their blessing, but they certainly are aware of what's happening. The demo delays expired, yes. so they've yes. had their say. Right. Uh, I, I don't believe, uh, you know, it's substantially uh, going to be more detrimental to the existing use to the neighborhood with right. a two-family as opposed to a three-family. When you're applying 7-2 to that, right. as part of that analysis. Right. Yeah. And 
they're not changing any curb cuts to the driveway or anything like that. Uh, so uh, the, the only question I had, and I didn't see it in the plans, the building maybe can answer it, was the height of the building. Uh, Obviously, we have a maximum height in town of 35 feet. I yep. did not see in the elevations what the height is going to be on this uh, building. It's going to be under 30. I believe it's 28 and a half, but I think you okay. can kind of look on this set of plans. Probably out of that for you in a second. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, uh, 28 and a half. Some yeah, it's going to be some under 35. Yeah. Yeah, about 27, and, yeah, just under 28 feet. So. 28 feet, and yeah. this, uh, yeah, this is, uh, would be above the, uh, what is this elevation? Yeah, the, the sidewalk elevation or the ground elevation at the, at the foundation. It sounds, it sounds like you're, you're, you I mean, we took the four, out. I think that's including doing the four corners. Yeah. Um, and averaging them out to make sure that we will okay. the 35. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, that was about it. Keep, keep in mind, we do have a memo from the building inspector. You we'll, we'll want to read we'll, it in yeah. afterwards. We'll read it in before yeah. we go to public sure. comment. John. <clears throat> on the uh, census card, on the first page of the census card, down to the lower right hand corner, does indicate notes that it was a historical. Um, okay. So. <clears throat> I did make a call today, and uh, Kim was uh, able to answer it, and the same thing here uh, with Kristen. That has expired by about a week, um, so they were all set on that issue. I did have a couple of questions, though. Um, first, <clears throat> I guess on the architectural drawings or whatever, uh, I did notice that um, and maybe since I, I don't see a full set of plans in it, yep. this is do not take these for construction purposes. I notice that the uh, the uh, left and right corners, uh, which is the roof uh, in the in the front portion of the house, extends well out over the uh, porch area. And if you look at the the one in the rear, uh, which is on. Um, Uh, it was a uh, 2.0. Um, it appears that the uh, <coughs> the roof area extends beyond the uh, the limits, substantially beyond the limits of the actual structure of the house. Uh, and I couldn't see it on the diagram uh, where this was being fit in, but my guess would be that if you exceed uh, the dimensions uh, on the certified plot plan that the building inspector will certainly uh, tell you to correct that so that if there is no overhang beyond the um, limits that you have posted on the certified plot plan. So that was one question I had. I don't know if you you had a jack on that or typically the roof overhang does does not count in your setback. It's the actual. So if, if there's a roof rink of eight or twelve inches, um, that's under the under the zoning. It's not included in the setback. I kind of disagree with you there, Jack. I think the building inspector has always said that the roof overhang does apply uh, if it's in the a past. Roof rink, I it does not because well, when, I, when I do foundation as builds, okay. I locate a foundation. Then when I do the final as built, if the roof rink does, and if there's a bump out for living space, it counts. That would, oh, sorry. Well, I, I'm, I'm, we, we can check on that. I'm not too worried about it. We're going to defer to the building inspector. Building inspector's going to. I was just going to say that roof break is not going to come out past that porch area. So and that porch area is plotted uh, on the front here. So it wouldn't come over that. Uh, that overhang wouldn't come uh, over the uh, that front setback. Okay. The uh, other, which was, has been brought up by the other two members of the board, um, I think I saw also in the assessor's uh, card here, or pages of the card, that it was a two-family uh, through 1986, and then somehow it became a three-family. 
don't know how, don't know where. Um, but I mean, certainly, uh, if the historical commission has given their blessing to remove the uh, remove the property or remove the house on the property, um, it meets the requirements of the other criteria of the zoning bylaws. And then the last thing I had was um, the request for a um, special permit under section 7.2. Uh, 7.2, uh, just reading the first sentence, or the first half of the sentence, non-conforming single or two-family uses located in business or industrial districts. This is neither business nor industrial. So I think we're doing a little bit of a stretch here uh, in terms of uh, accepting it under um, 7.2 as, as, it, as it stands right now. So I'll just leave it there for now. Okay. All right. Um, I think that um, <clears throat> I think we can all agree that it's at least a two-family, right? I mean, it seems like from the public records that you know, I, I think at least in my mind, you've overcome the uh, the multifamily use aspect of it. I think that in all respects, other than the frontage, you're in conformity with the performance standards and the frontage issue is solved by the legal non-conforming nature of the lot. So I don't really have any objections to what you're looking to do or anything else to add. All right, thanks. Uh, <coughs> my, my, well, before I give you my thoughts, let's give you the building inspector's thoughts. Uh, we have a memo that I'll read into the record from Glenn Redman, the uh, building inspector, dated uh, yesterday, May 15th, um, for tonight's hearing regarding case 1805, 119 Salem Street. This proposal is to demolish an existing non-conforming three-family dwelling and to construct a new two-family dwelling in an S-15 district, in parentheses, single family. This proposal does meet all the current dimensional controls in an S-15 district. I do not have any opposition to a special permit being granted. And then it goes on to uh, quote, to list the, uh, the text of section 7.2 of the, uh, the zoning bylaw. Um, My, my thought is is that relief under 7.2 is I, I'm not sure that that's the appropriate section that they're looking for relief under you're not in an industrial or a uh, or a business district you're in a residential s15 district in my mind that defers us back to the table of uses for uh, residential district yes s15 district and if that's the case is a special permit appropriate? Or are we looking for a, for a variance from the table of uses in a residential S-15 district? Um, so to, just to, to go back to the, and bear with me while I find the right page here. I guess page six. Yeah, I got it. So, um, pages aren't numbered, so bear with me. All right, here we go. So, uh, in the table of uses 532 for residential districts, we're in S15. Um, two or multifamily dwellings are, are are not allowed under the table of uses in those districts. Now, we have the added feature here that this has been essentially an existing, and if we go with, I, I, I'm, I, I'm inclined to go with the board's sentiment that it's been at, at least a two family since the mid 80s, if we go with the property card. Mm -hmm. uh, do we then have to consider that a grandfathered use, even though it's not allowed in the district? And at that point, are we dealing with a 732 analysis 
where it's an existing non conforming use in a residential district rather than 7 2, which is only business and industrial. I, I, I kind of disagree, David. Uh, I, I think it's just the first paragraph of 7.2 that notes business and industrial districts. And that's put in there because that is a, a case where the building inspector can make the decision in regards to extensions or alterations, et cetera, uh, of a uh, non-conforming single or two-family use in those districts. And then it goes on to say that where a non-conforming nature of a single or two-family use is increased or where other non-conforming uses are changed or substantially extended, et cetera, et cetera, that use may be reconstructed or altered, go to the zoning board for a special permit. So in other words, you're carving I'm out the first that, part of that paragraph <laughs> only as applying to business and industrial I'm and the rest of the paragraph. The first paragraph only to all applies districts. to yeah, business okay. and to uh, industrial. All right. And that is put in there because they intended that the building inspector then could make that decision in those two particular zones. Other zones, they would have to go to the uh, Board of Appeals for a decision. That's the, that's the way I'm reading it. And my query is, I, I don't know that we've, I don't know that we've consistently interpreted it that way to the board. Well. And then reading the building inspector's memo, I believe that's the way he interprets it also. Or he wouldn't make reference to 7.2. I think he, he notes would. that he supports a special permit under 7.2. Well, I think the rubric that they have of non-conforming uses of 7.2, I think lends itself to um, the fact that it probably is restricted to business and industrial because it's not permitted there. I mean, clearly there's no one supposed to be living there. So with the non-conforming uses of 7.2, I, I kind of read it that that is specifically for those districts. And then the non-conforming structures of 7.3 would apply, I think, maybe in this case. That's just my reading. All right, and so, so we've got a little bit of a difference of opinion there, but, but if, we, uh, if we go to uh, section 7.8 in the zoning bylaw, which discusses voluntary demolition and reconstruction, mm -hmm. uh, any reconstruction following a voluntary demolition of a non-conforming structure shall meet the following requirements. A single or two family dwelling that is non-conforming only with respect to lot size and or frontage yeah. may be voluntarily removed or demolished and replaced by a new single or two family dwelling. So I think uh, and and if I so if so it, Follow my logic here. If we if we if we opine that seven two only applies to business and industrial districts, mm -hmm. then I I don't even know that the applicant needs to be here. I was just going to say if you read mm -hmm. seven point eight a, I this would, is something I would that, that they, they are allowed by right. You to do actually it. may be able to do by right. So, uh, except in the event that the reconstruction would cause the structure to exceed the lot coverage, it doesn't of the original non-conforming building or cause the uh, move the original footprint, which I think this does, it moves the original footprint. The building inspector may issue a building permit if the proposed reconstruction will not extend the nonconformity or create a new nonconformity, which it doesn't. Other than on the Okay. So keep keeping that in mind. I, I would agree with you there. Right. So so keeping that in mind, do we want to offer the applicant a chance to either A continue or B withdraw without prejudice and go talk to the building inspector about whether or not you have to be here in the first place? I don't know that we can vote on seven on the, your application under seven point two. If our opinion is that that a section, and, and again, we're not 100% in agreement well, on that, but let's presume for a minute that we are. Um, if the applicable section 
is not 7.2 of the zoning bylaw, but the applicable, applicable section is 7.8, which I think it is. I mean, that seems pretty clear. Mm -hmm. All right. And Let me ask one question, though. Sure. Just, just on 7.8. So it said for a one or two family, there might be some confusion where Glenn sees it listed as a three family, and we're going to a two. There's nothing in 7.8 that spells that out. But well, and again, and, and I agree with you. If you're if you're presenting this as an existing three family, then that maybe throws a monkey wrench into your analysis. Yeah. Uh, however, if you're presenting this as the building record and the the town record card, property card, even though it says on your assessor's record three units, right. um, the build the the building card. The last notation says two. You could perhaps convince the building inspector that you'd like to go with two for the purposes of trying to see if you can fit into the into the uh, format of 7.8, and you might not even need to be here. Right. Well, another option would be to uh, continue, continue if you wish until you had time come back at the next available time that's open. If you have to come back at all, um, well, rather than that's what I mean. I mean, you, I you think what we'd like to do is continue so that the MBA <laughs> can talk to Glenn. I don't want to withdraw just in case right. he says no. Those no, are your, your options, options. Right, right, right. You know, but right. I know it's an option. So I would suggest. Uh, I, would I mean, we have to open it up to the public for discussion too. But our, our sense would be to continue. All so right. We could talk to Glenn. Right. So based upon the board's comments and comments from the applicant, that seems like where this may be headed, uh, unless there's something else that changes either of our minds as we uh, move forward. Um, so I think the best thing to do right now would be to open up to public comment. If there's any member of the public here tonight that would like to speak uh, to this application, um, You'll be given an opportunity to do so. I ask that you rise, identify yourself by name and address so our uh, scrivener can know who you are, um, and we'll be happy to hear you. Going once. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Todd Ellis, uh, 123 Salem Street, the partners of the property. Um, first of all, just on behalf of neighbors, we're so happy that, some, that something's being done with the property to develop it as it is now it's sort of <laughs> ramshackled let's say um, a couple questions though uh, first thing is uh, why was there a delay in the demo uh, statutory okay. the his, because it's a historical building right. the historical commission uh, can exercise their right to delay anything being done with the property to try to work with the applicant to discuss preservation of historical aspects of the building that the commission finds might be meritorious. Uh, they have six months to do that, which ties the developer owner up for six months while they have a discussion or don't have a discussion. And then once that six month period is up, the historical commission's jurisdiction, if you will, lapses. Um, the second question is probably, this could be something offline, but uh, we're, many of the neighbors are wondering about the landscape on the property. Currently, the property is overgrown, um, including the trees that abut my property. We're waiting for those to fall on our property. Um, we're assuming those will be removed, so um, that's probably an offline discussion, obviously. Yeah, I don't know if the, the applicant. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, the it's going to be a complete overhaul of the landscape. Uh, be more to come over, discuss about the trees, about trimming the back, or taking them down, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, um, that's it. All right, thank, thank you, sir. You. Uh, any other thoughts? Uh, from the board about anything that we've discussed, jurisdiction-wise, what section-wise, continuous continuance versus <coughs> a vote. Well, we're, we're talking really about two issues. One issue is the uh, the use of the property now and in the future, and uh, the second issue is the uh, demolition and the rebuild on the property and what it would be. 
in terms of not only use but its uh, location on the lot and meeting the, uh, the dimensional controls, which it does. So I mean, there's, there's two issues that are involved here, and I think it's it's very easy to to try to not to confuse but to inter intermingle those two options. Mm -hmm. And I think when the building inspector is looking at this, he's looking to see. Uh, if this is a possibility of doing something, I just believe that, uh, as I said initially, uh, the 7-2 seven, seven really um, is more for, in my opinion, business and industrial districts, which was addressing. So I think this allows us additional time to, or allows the applicant additional time to go back to the building inspector and see if they can work it out. And maybe he doesn't have to come back before the board anyway. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that might be a reasonable suggestion, Jack. I mean, you may, you may not even have to come back, but but we can continue to the next uh, open meeting, which I think is well with the with the 40B. We want to make sure that we continue it to a when's the. Uh, July, When's the, the July, 18th. July. Mm -hmm. July, okay, so the June meetings are, are wide open if we want to schedule. Yes. June 20th. June 20th. Okay, that's the next open meeting. Mm -hmm. So, continuance to June 20th? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, we'll take a vote and, and continue it. Do we have a motion to continue to June 20th? So moved. Okay, second? Second. Uh, all right. Uh, all those in favor? Right, you continue to June 20th, and maybe we won't even have to see you on June 20th. And if Keith comes in to talk to Glenn, would Andrew or Kristen be able to yeah. relay some of some of you know, yes. the sections of Absolutely. versus 7.8, some of the discussion we had tonight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, For I sure. think that makes sense to make your, okay. your conversation more productive. Right. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Next case on our agenda tonight is uh, case 1807, which is uh, Three Mount Vernon Street. And I'll go ahead and read that notice into the record. Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass on uh, Wednesday, May 16th, at seven, uh, 2018 at 7 p.m. on the application of Timothy Smith pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 9 for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 63 and 732 to construct a deck with a non-conforming rear yard setback and pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 10 for a variance under the Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 63 and 74 to exceed the maximum lot coverage permitted on the property located at Three Mount Vernon Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, unless an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the appropriate boards, committees, commissions, and departments in the town of Reading, members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals and planning boards of the surrounding communities. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so anybody, including the applicant or member of the public that wishes to speak on this application, please stand and raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The response is I do. I do. I do. And the floor is yours. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Smith. I'm uh, Mount Three Mount Vernon. I'm here with my wife, Renee Sachs. We uh, moved into town just approximately two years ago. So we are requesting to um, put a small deck um, on the rear of our property. Um, I think you'll see from the map there's one direct about it and um, 
we have essentially a really small lot for a large house in town. Um, so we're a little hamstrung on what we can do out there. Um, looking at the um, S15 uh, zoning uh, regulations, it looks like we're already over the percentage of um, lot coverage anyway in the existing structure and garage. So what we're attempting to do is we have, um, the lot is not flat either, so we've got a pretty good slope on the rear of down to the garage, rear of the garage um, on the property. We're looking to put a, um, a small deck off the rear of our kitchen um, on the alongside the house. So it'll be long and thin along the um, dimensions of the house as opposed to going out um, because of the small rear setback. Um, the dimensions are on the map, I believe we're um, approximately, um, let's check. 26 feet from the corner of our property to the lot line and 12 and um, slightly less than that on the, um, the kitchen which is the entrance to the deck. So we're proposing to go 12 foot 6 and 13.7 feet in um, respectively on the size of the deck. Essentially that's what we're trying to do and we're um, going through the process. We have put a slider on there that we naturally go down with three uh, low steps to the deck. And given the slope of the land, we won't, um, we won't be anticipating the railing all the way around the deck because it um, will come out much level with the um, slope of the land. So we need one small step down. And uh, be willing to answer any other questions as best I can. I'm not the builder, I'm the property owner, um, so forgive me if I don't understand every, uh, all the terminology here, so we're learning it as we go. Okay. Great. We'll, uh, we'll try to help you through that if we can, sir. Uh, your request this evening before the board is for a, uh, one of your requests is for a variance. And we'd like you to, to speak into the record that the, the requirements of the law in Massachusetts for granting of a variance are that you must meet four specific criteria that this board has to make a finding in your favor to grant the variance. And I'd like you to, to speak on the record if you would. Uh, I mean, we do have your submission. And we've reviewed it. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to hear from you if at all possible, uh, how you feel your application is supported in those four criteria. Yeah, I tried to um, answer the questions to the best of my ability on, on, on the four criteria that, that are listed. Um, I don't believe um, that certainly in some terms, um, detriment to the public good. I think we'd be improving the look and the, the um, certainly the aspect of the property from anyone who can view it. I don't believe that there would be any detriment to the public good. Um, as it's a deck, I noted that there's really no change to anything structurally. So. Um, don't believe there's any issue there. Um, in terms of um, s substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, we have done some um, construction work on the house. Um, we are looking to try to improve the lot. This seemed to be the most um, reasonable way to, to improve our outside space without spending a, a fortune on landscaping. Um, the lot is not very level um, and to landscape it or put a patio or some other um, outdoor space for us to use would, um, we believe, be more financially difficult. Um, is the slope due in any way to any existing ledge or is it just uh, on a hill in the back? It's a, it's a hill, I believe. Okay. I don't believe there's any ledge. Okay. There is a, a concrete walkway which would, is currently there which will be covered. Um, 
Yeah, I don't. Tell me a little bit about um, the first criteria. Criteria number one: soil conditions, shape, topography affect that land or the structure in question. Yeah, the uh, the current. Um, Topography is the, there's a slope up to Linden Street from the rear of the property. Um, there are some, there's one mature tree, a few shrubs um, along the property line with our director butter. Um, there's a concrete walkway which is not in the best condition and would be better gone. And the uh, the rest of the is uh, grass. That it? Yep. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. As per our, our usual practice, we'll, uh, the board may want to have a discussion and certainly have questions and or comments regard your, regarding your application and we'll, we'll start on the other side this time with Eric. So just one point of clarification in your uh, variance write-up. Uh, you write that the deck would not cover the sloping piece of the property. And I just wanted to just confirm, is it is it on the portion that's sloping or is it not? Because it sounds like, it would at least in your description, that it's not. It would, it would cover some of the slope, yes. Um, okay. All right. I mean, I just, I just was... Meets the slope, yeah. Yeah, okay. it goes out to the slope to the other end. Yeah. So, so with the variance, you, you're probably getting the sense that you know it's a it's a challenging threshold to meet. Right. Um, and so right now you're actually over the allowed 25% coverage, which is why you need the variance in the first place. Um, by adding the tech, we would be um, increasing that. And one of the things that one of the well, the first prong is that we need to make a determination that the soil conditions, shape, or topography of the, of the land would necessitate that. So if it's not, if the deck is not gonna be where the slope is, it just raises a question in my mind of, do we need to put the deck there because of the slope? And if it's not covering the slope, it, it sounds like maybe we don't. The next question that, or next problem we have to ask is, is it a substantial hardship, financial or otherwise? And I don't, I mean, I don't know that um, the, uh, I'm just trying to, so you, you note that it would add a nice outdoor feature. I don't know that not having an out, a nice outdoor feature rises to the level of financial or of a substantial hardship. And I was just curious if you had an idea or could maybe just give the board a little insight as to the uh, difference between the, the cost of the deck versus the cost of the landscaping and, you know, maybe percentages. You don't have to volunteer dollar figures or anything like that. But how how cost effective it would be. Um, do you mean landscaping for the whole property or just for the back? I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess, because it sounds like the reason that you want to do the deck, mm -hmm. at least in that area, is owing to the, you know, cost of landscaping in that area. And at least in that area, it seems more cost effective to do the deck rather than, you know, plantings or, or grass. Yeah, we looked or, into a patio first. Okay, to, so it's, a, so it's really a patio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. So the patio, patio, um, patio is about five to six thousand more. Okay. Than the deck. Okay. All right. Um, so that's for the variance. In terms of the special permit portion um, of the relief that you've requested, I don't have the um, the rear setbacks for the back corner where the garage is, but I 
can note that it seems pretty tight there. So I don't think that, at least in the special permit analysis, that extending the deck uh, beyond where it is would be more detrimental than what's, you know, the, the existing nonconformities that are there. But I do think that at least with the first two prongs of the variance in my mind, I will defer judgment on those until the rest of the board weighs in, but I, I think that those are our challenge for your petition. That's all I have there. Thanks, Eric. John. <coughs> I see that the uh, the house is built around the 19, 1900s. It doesn't give us an actual date. Um, and certainly it was a very, in 1900, it, it was not a, there was no zoning. The zoning didn't come in until 1942. Um, but at that time, you know, that was a nice piece of property. It was a corner lot. It was nicely located, I'm sure, at that, that particular time. Um, and when the house was constructed on that particular lot, that, that's all they needed, so that's what they built. Uh, I see it has had a couple of owners uh, recently, you being one of them, you being the latest. Um, as Eric very aptly mentioned, um, you have two hurdles here. Hurdle number one is the tallest of the hurdles. You have to make it over the first hurdle to get to the second hurdle. And the first hurdle is increasing the nonconformity, which is the uh, percent coverage of structures on the property. And you're going up roughly uh, 228 additional square feet. Um, so you're going up substantially over where it stands now. Um, that's the biggest hurdle. And I think, as Eric mentioned, too, um, it's very difficult um, to look at that because the Chapter 40A is very specific about meeting the four criteria. And the toughest criteria, believe it or not, to get over is the first criteria. If there was a piece of ledge standing in your way in the back, if there was um, conservation land, that or maybe there was a, uh, a, a large tree that prevented you from utilizing another portion of your property, it would be a condition that certainly could help you over that, that hurdle. The second hurdle, to me, as I think Eric has mentioned, is not a significant portion of the special permit, at least in my mind. The largest hurdle is the first. Uh, to get over, and I, I think by increasing it, it makes it that much more difficult, and not having a substantial set of conditions there makes it even more difficult to get over. So I'll just leave it at that for now. All right. Thank you, John. All right. Uh, I, I would agree with uh, Eric. John's uh, summation. I, I think you have a couple of issues that you have to uh, uh, attack here. First one being the variance uh, on that, and I think that's going to be your most difficult uh, argument on the variance. Uh, increasing an already legal, I guess you could say, non-conforming piece of property in regards to lot coverage. You, you're looking to increase that coverage uh, up to 34.8%, uh, whereas now it's at 30.9%. Uh, and I, reading the criteria in the uh, variance, I think it's very difficult just to get by the first criteria in regards to your lot conditions or anything as that. And I think the second criteria would also be difficult to argue in regards to a substantial hardship. Uh, Something that you would like on your property is nice if you can fit it in, but it's not a necessity uh, on that. And so that's where you have to balance a, a substantial hardship versus, well, geez, I would like to do that. It's not a big deal uh, on that. It's really, a deck is, is, is not a necessity uh, today. It's nice to have. On that. And that's where I think you're going to have issues is uh, getting through 
your first step, which is, is getting the variance uh, as opposed to the special permit. And then getting to the special permit uh, may be not as difficult as John said. Uh, you have to meet certain criteria. Already the house itself, the main structure, is very, very close to the rear property line. And the deck, the proposed deck you have is somewhat less, though it is within the 20-foot buffer there. So you would have to convince the uh, board in that regard. But I think the variance is your problem. Oh, thank you, Rob. Yeah. You raised your hand. Would you like well, to speak to that? I, I just wanted to, um, I, we just wanted to make the area more usable because it's sloped and damp and it's not a very use, it's not a usable outdoor space. So that's, that's all I wanted right. to say. Right, so. right. No, obviously you looked into it as a patio, which yeah, it's going to be more expensive from what you've said. Yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, a patio would also not require you to come before the board or require a uh, building permit or anything like that. Uh, I think that's a landscaping issue. If it's an aquifer protection district, you'd is need it? To, if it is, I you'd don't have to, know. Yeah. We'd have to be have to make I, that determination. Hmm. I think you may need to see the town engineer. Uh, yeah, I don't see it listed. Doesn't say. On the plot plan, I don't think it is. Oh, if it isn't, then that's, that's, that's yeah. not. Jack's usually pretty good about getting okay. uh, most of those. Well, that would that was just my thought. If it was, right. that would be an additional right. one hurdle. But that's that's obviously you got an option. You said it's going to be more expensive, and it may be that's the only way you could have to go. I don't know. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Nick. I pretty much echo everything the board has said. Um, you're you're really asking to build. A structure on the back on the on your home, um, but not getting this variance doesn't preclude you from still enjoying it. Putting a patio or some other landscaping features out there, but I would be interested in knowing exactly why you didn't go with the patio. Um, the, our kitchen is. Do you know how many feet up? It's it's. It's above ground. I don't know. I don't know. Ten feet, maybe. No, four, five feet. Four, five, four, five. Okay. Sorry, Charles. Dimension. Four, five feet. Um, so it would have just been a lot of steps down. It felt like a long drop to the patio, um, whereas the deck just felt more um, sort of consistent with the architecture. Mm. That it was more kitchen level, okay. and it felt more comfortable for our family for kids running up and down stairs and things like that. So that's, we, had, we started with the patio. It was, it was a lot more expensive. We were worried about the moisture back there. It's, it's a very dark, not sunny area. Um, the grass is, it's, um, yeah, it's in the shade of the house. In the shade well, pretty much. Very damp, so. The I can see that. It's the north side of the house. It's yeah. the north yeah. side, and we, um, so then we moved to looking into a deck, thinking that would be more consistent and comfortable for the architecture of the house. Okay. So that's how we, and so which helped, but that wasn't our primary reason. It was actually just thought it would look better with that architecture of the house. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I chime in, uh, we're going to read Glenn Redmond's memo again, dated today, uh, yesterday, May 15, 2018. Uh, regarding tonight's hearing on uh, the three cases that are before us, specifically with regard to case 1807, uh, 3 Mount Vernon Street, Glenn points out that this proposal is to construct a 12 by 19 foot deck, 12.6 feet from the rear property line. This property is located in an S15 district. The required rear yard is 20 feet and a variance from 6-3 is required. Um, although we're talking more about lot coverage I than we are the, about... Again, the mixture of the two. Yeah. So I think perhaps it is it is both because it's... Well, while the, the building itself is already significantly in the setback, the new addition, if you will, the deck a, yeah. would present a new encroachment, I guess, into the Ooh. rear yard setback. But I think... We could take that in combination with the lot coverage and yeah, with the our location of the structure, including the garage, um, where it is so close to both the side and the rear. But I mean, that's 
that's something we're probably not going to get to. No, no, that no. I, I, I think you're right. With the lot coverage. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, yeah. So, so you've heard you've heard a lot about from from the board tonight about variances, and I just want to add a couple of I think cogent points um, in terms of. Uh, some legal perspective in terms of, of it, nobody likes to be told what they can and can't do with their house. There are laws in Massachusetts with regard to issues that are in, uh, I don't want to call it violation, but in some way encroach into the, the bylaws of our town. That's what chapter 40A is, is there for, um, that covers a variance. And so what you're asking the board to do is to use that statutory construct to allow you to break the law. It's not that sinister, I can, I can assure you. Uh, and I don't mean to make it sound that sinister because it's not, it's a deck. Uh, but the, uh, the, the law, and the, the statutory law and the case law that, that uh, discusses variances discusses a couple of points that I, wanna, that I wanna put on the record. And that is the theoretical use and enjoyment of your lot is not grounds for for a variance. The uh, small and uh, you know the, the the size of your lot, lot size, an undersized lot is not grounds for a variance. You've you've the house is the, you managed to fit quite a bit of house on on the lot that you have, or the people that built the house did. Uh, and as such, that's why that first criteria uh, regarding something unique, which is why I was kind of leading you with some questions during your presentation earlier regarding any unique features. A sloping lot that's due to just natural slope, I'm not sure that I would agree that that, that meets the criteria. Um, the other thing that the board looks at in terms of making a determination is is this the only place on that lot that this deck could go? And I think we have to collectively ask ourselves that question. That's the ultimate question that we have to, in, in, in going through those first couple of criteria, is this the only place that a deck could go, that you could have a deck? Now, it may not make sense to have a deck coming out of the side of the house because there's no reason to have a deck there. You'd have to put a doorway in and have somebody coming out of a, bedroom onto that deck. I, I understand from a utility purpose that that might cause additional <coughs> cost and expense. But from a shape and topography of the land perspective, um, what, you're, what we need to make a determination, uh, what we need to determine and rule on is this the only place on that lot that that deck could go. Now, no matter where you put an additional structure on that lot, you're going to increase the lot coverage further from an already non-conforming lot coverage. And so I think um, we, as a board, owe it to you to kind of give you a sense as to where, uh, where we're coming from when we, when we say that a variance is a very difficult hurdle. Um, and we do grant variances, we have recently, and, and this, this seems like a good use of your property, but for the fact that you're hamstrung a little bit by by what's already there. Um, and it doesn't really matter necessarily whether we think it's a good it's a good use. That's not what the law requires us to do. Um, and we all live in Reading and own homes in Reading too, so we, we understand where you're coming from. Um, so from that standpoint, I think the board's made some clear indications about where that that's likely where the board likely is is falling in that regard and so before i open up to any public comment or questions from the public i want to give you a couple of ideas and options that you have and what the consequences of the board action might be the first is you hear, you're here and you filed an application with the board and you have your time before the board tonight. The board is here convened to hear your application. And if you'd like us to vote on your application, that's what we're here to do. 
you need at least four members to rule in favor of your application for it to pass. Okay, if the board doesn't vote in your favor, that vote goes on the record. You are then barred for two years from doing anything that is substantially the same as this application with your property from the date our decision issues. You may want to take that into consideration. Your second option would be that you think maybe there's a better plan that you want to go back and think about and come back to this board at another date in the future and revamp your application somehow. That would be called a continuance. That leaves the case open still and continues the time for the board to hear the case to another time where perhaps you might want to come back with something new, different, or otherwise that you think the board, uh, that might be in more favorable to you in terms of an application before this board. That's your right as well. If you're concerned with regard to a two-year prohibition from uh, that would result from a no vote would be, you have the right to withdraw your application. You can withdraw it without prejudice, which means you can always refile it at another time. That means you have to go through the filing process, application posting, maybe even pay another fee process. But it's withdrawn, the board hasn't taken any action on the case, in which case you could still bring it back if you feel like you want us to vote at another time. You just have to go through the process again and reopen it. So those are the, those are the options available to you and I think it's only fair that we provide you with that, uh, with those options so that you know uh, you have as much information as you can to make an informed decision about what's best for you. Um, with that said, I will now open the matter to any public comment. If there are any members in the audience that would like to speak to this uh, application, please rise, uh, make sure you've been sworn. If you haven't, I will again. Uh, identify yourself by name and address, and we'd be happy to hear you. Hearing none, we will close the public comment portion of our hearing tonight. Uh, any more comments by the by the board members? Go ahead, John. No, I'm, I think I've, I've said what I. Yeah. Have, yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, Robert. John. The only comment that I would have. <coughs> <coughs> for the petitioners is that um, by just going to clarify one of the options in my mind that by withdrawing without prejudice you in essence close the book on this particular hearing but not what you're looking to eventually achieve it also gives you time to go back to the building inspector and say hey look at what can we do on the property to get some more living space or get some desired outside space that we would like without um, going into the structure aspect of it and see what you can come up with. Um, <laughs> as I think David aptly presented in the board, I think you, you get the feeling of the board it's not that we are trying to tell you that you can't do something, which is not right, it's your property. However, Chapter 40A is very specific uh, in maintaining um, order throughout the Commonwealth, and that's what we have to go by. So a variance is a very specific item and the most difficult of all relief to achieve. So I just throw that out there. Right. Okay. Uh, the next step, I think, would be, I know I've given you precious little time to consider the options that you have, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot a little bit and ask you which of the options I presented, well, if you have any questions on the options I presented, and which of the options I presented you, you would like to move forward with. 
bit like some time. Yeah, I mean, it, if, you know, I mean, if you, if you if you'd like us to take a break and you'd like to go out in the hall and 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 have a discussion we'll about it, we'll, we'll take yeah. a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah please, thank you. Yeah. please, thank you. we'll uh, we'll 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 take we'll take a two minute two minute two break. Recess, yeah, we'll take a two minute break and go off the record. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. The hearing's back open again. Please do. Um, well, how do you educate yourself on the laws of the variances? I mean, I thought we were pretty well prepared coming in today, but we wouldn't have come in with this if we knew it would be rejected. So, I guess, I guess I'm wondering where we go wrong. You know, what we need. How do we need? How do we educate ourselves or we're in compliance? Well. Factor, it, it never hurts to consult a good lawyer. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> in, in all dis full disclosure. And so is Eric. <laughs> and, 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 and so is Eric. Had I known, uh, I would have. Yeah. But, but yeah. I, I know we had a we had a nice chuckle on the subject uh, because it came from me. But um, but that ultimately, you know, when there are. <laughs> When in dealing with a detail such as 40A and a variance, it never hurts to get a legal opinion mm -hmm. with regard. And I know, you know, sometimes that might be cost prohibitive, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that might be one suggestion. Um, Jack Sullivan prepared the the plan um, that you wrote up. I don't know if you if you consulted with him. Jack's, Jack's been around the block a time or two. He's very experienced and uh, and has you know a myriad of experience in whether or not he opined, um, and perhaps you did, and that's why you were here. Uh, but that would also be one. Um, consulting with town staff is always uh, they're great resources. You know, they, you know while they're not going to tell you what to do. Uh, you know, you might ask the, you know, is this going to be even worth my while type questions, or is there anything else I can do? Um, you know, you've got a, a wealth of experience behind the counter uh, here in town, uh, you know, from the building inspector to, you know, all, all staff. They're all very helpful and very knowledgeable um, that you might be able to go to. And those are, those are a couple that just come off the, the, the top of my head. Um, Yeah, I have to say that the staff here at Reading is, is very good. Um, they want to help. Uh, they certainly will give you their impressions and what has happened before, before not only this board but other boards, whether it's this board or CPDC or health or engineering, whatever may be the situation. Um, that doesn't mean you have to take their recommendations one way or the other this still is up to you but uh, because most of the people here are are very good at what they do um, it's worth 
a consideration when you do this and that's why I, I suggest to you that if the, if you decide to withdraw without prejudice you go back and talk to staff especially the building inspector and anybody else who's in community development um, and see what how else you can use your property and maybe get some use out of it we still haven't taken a vote so yeah it's um, you know it, it it's it's little consolation you know at, at this point but um, but you know having you know ha having access to those types of uh, resources you know is is important I think in, in you know great in this town so with that in mind after you've had a chance to mull it away I'm sorry did I did you have any other questions as well okay all right uh, with that in mind, um, what can the board do for you tonight? Be more lenient. Well, so you know, I, I guess the, I, I guess the, the, the point too is um, the best case that you can make for yourself yeah. with regard to any development in town is to try to put a plan together that works for you so you don't have to be here yeah okay that you know you put something together that doesn't require a board or committee or commission approval because you always take a chance mm -hmm. at that point in time that you're leaving a decision with regard to your property up to others uh, if you you know if you do something that maybe is not 100% perfect, but gets it done quicker, perhaps <coughs> cheaper, uh, and without having to submit to this type of an inquisition, uh, you know, you might find yourself better off. Uh, I'm sorry. So, uh, what would you like us to do? It's either A, or B or C. There's nothing in between. Yeah, no, I know. I heard the be more lenient portion. I, yeah. I, I can appreciate that. <laughs> I do. No, we went through it. Okay. So, uh, you'd like to withdraw the application, uh, I'm guessing without prejudice. We'll do it without prejudice. Uh, which means we're, cl we're, cl we're, we're closing the case down, but you may come, if you find something that we haven't found, whereby you want to reopen the case or, or bring a new case, a new this case. Yeah. regarding new this case. specific subject matter, yeah. uh, you are not precluded from doing so, you may do that. Okay. okay. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we would need to, the applicant has requested a withdrawal no. without prejudice, and we would need a vote of the board to approve or vote on the, the request to withdraw. Right. So we need a motion to approve the applicant's request to withdraw without prejudice. So moved. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so moved. Robert, yeah. do we have a second? A second. Actually. Second by John. Any further discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor? All right. Your case is withdrawn without prejudice and you are free to get on with your night and take what we've hopefully explained to you to heart and perhaps um, go back and redouble your efforts. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. We've erased the paperwork. That's all we've done tonight. Okay.
right, the next case on our agenda, thank you for waiting patiently while we work through these. is uh, case 1808, 53 Harrison Street. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, May 16th, 2018, at 7 p.m. on the application of Melanie Carlson, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 63 and 73, or pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 10, for a variance under Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 63 and 74, as may be determined by the Zoning Board, to remove an existing garage and construct a new two-story addition with a non-conforming side yard setback on the property located at 53 Harrison Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the uh, appropriate boards, committees, commissions, and departments in the town of Reading, members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of the surrounding communities. Testimony given before the board is taken under oath. Anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this application, including members of the public and the applicant, please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn. All right. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and your response is I do. I do. All right. The applicant has the floor. Uh, before you start, Nancy, yes. uh, I'd like to put on the record that Nancy and I have served together on a town committee together, uh, and that that does not uh, impact my ability or uh, desire to be impartial as it relates to this case. I wanted to put it on the record. Thank Thanks, Nancy. I'm Nancy Toomey, the architect for the project, and Melanie uh, Carlson and John Gardner are here as owners, and their builder, Dan Scott, is here as well for any questions. Um, what we're requesting is a special permit under section 6.3 and section 7.3.2 for non conforming structures. What they are planning to do or hope to do is to remove an existing non-conforming garage along the side uh, and uh, a small breezeway that connects it right now to the main house and reconstruct a single car garage, well actually a, a tandem garage below, um, a first floor expansion of living space and then a second floor additional bedroom. The property slopes, it's on uh, 53 Harrison Street. It, it uh, actually is up on a hill that overlooks Memorial Park, quite a nice location. And um, the current garage and driveway, a couple of things uh, are impacting it. One is it's a fairly steep slope, particularly in the winter. And uh, it also um, doesn't have proper foundations below it. So anything that we needed to do to expand living space or second floor space, we would need to remove that garage in order to accomplish it. Um, the house was built in 1940. Um, and. Um, it, uh, I think the, the, it, it currently has just two bedrooms. They have an expanded in it, two children and themselves, so they would like that third bedroom on the second floor. So this plan uh, does not make it any more non-conforming than it currently is. It's 10.1 10 uh, feet from the property line. It does extend it uh, approximately 11 feet towards the front of the house and an additional 13 feet or so towards the back of the existing garage. Uh, any additional questions? I'm more than happy to ask. Great. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, we will go ahead and, uh, you know what, we'll start this one with reading Glenn's um, before we take board comments and questions. Uh, Glenn's memo dated May 16th, 2018 from Glenn Redmond, the building inspector. Case 1808-53 Harrison. This proposal is to remove an existing attached garage and to construct a new two-story addition 15 feet by 43.6 feet, that is 10.1 feet from the side property line. 
The required side yard setback is 15 feet. This property is located in an S15 district. A variance from section 63 is required. Um, why don't we go ahead and take some board comments and questions and we'll start down with uh, with Nick. Well, I mean, as you know, you all heard about the variance and what's required of that, but I'll leave that aside for now. Um, I, I, I like the project. I think it's a good project. In regards to extending the nonconformity, I don't see that as being any more detrimental to the neighborhood. That's all I really got to say about this right now. Thank you, Nick. Robert. Uh, yeah, in, in this particular case, uh, I believe we're dealing with a uh, legal non-conforming lot, uh, less than required frontage, uh, existing setback is uh, uh, 10 feet on the, uh, uh, what would that be, southern side of the lot there, which is the garage, which is where I, we're talking about putting the addition that uh, uh, they're noting is going to require a special permit and or variance there. Uh, section 7.3.2 does allow a uh, special permit with a finding of not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming building. I think certainly this case, uh, this addition would fall into that. That it is not going to be uh, substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. I know Glenn noted in his in his, uh, in his memo that he thought it required a variance on this particular case uh, from the table. Yeah, it, it's uh, noted that you're supposed to have a 15 foot side yard setback there, and with the you know you're asking for a 10.1 foot setback on that. So, uh, but it's already not and we're not any closer to the side yard than we currently are. I have been under the impression that it's actually a special permit, not a variance. Yeah. Now, I think we've had some discussion with this on the board before uh, on that, so we will probably have further discussion with that tonight. Uh, and uh, why don't I end it right there uh, okay. on that. Thank you, Robert. John. Um, when I looked at this and I saw that uh, Glenn had indicated a special permit from uh, table dimensional controls, I was kind of uh, thrown off a little bit because I, I, don't, I don't remember ever having issued a special permit on a dimensional control before. <coughs> and I thought it was more, much more appropriate and it wasn't even in well, it was actually in his letter that it, it comes under uh, 732 because we're, we're extending, but we're not encroaching any more than, um, than what has been the case already. The only question I had was the, uh, I'll start off by saying that. The only question I had was uh, from, the, from your architectural renderings and whatever, was the uh, relative uh, size of the addition in terms of height in comparison to the existing structure that's there now? It wouldn't be any higher. Um, if you look at the front, I, I'm trying to keep it all as a cape style house. Which is I was looking at seven. I was looking at seven, uh, seven of ten on your architecture. Seven, yeah. It looks. It looks taller because it has a dormer on it, but the actual height of the main peak of that addition is lower than the main peak of the existing house. So I know it's probably hard to see it. You might be able to see it. You know, I might come mm -hmm. But this is the main peak of the house, and that's the main peak of the addition. So it looks okay. like it is higher, but it's just the dormer at the front that's higher to get that additional window in the bedroom, that front bedroom. Because when I when I, looked, when I went by the house, stood there for a little while. I didn't stand. I sat in the car. <laughs> um, but uh, when I looked at that, I, I was trying to visualize exactly where that was going to be. And now that I see that that's the ridge pole of the of the current or the uh, right. And if you look at uh, sheet eight, 
the side elevation, mm -hmm. it's a little clearer in there. You can see behind the ridge is a little bit higher than the addition. Okay. It's hard with a flat drawing. I'm not skilled with three dimensionals yet. <laughs> and <clears throat> consistent with what is happening in the town, uh, we have a fair number of smaller homes who were built way back when. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, at least in my in my age group. But I mean, <laughs> but um, intending uh, just as we did with the last uh, hearing this evening, trying to improve without moving, because we know what. Uh, even if you were to sell and move to another house. Uh, it's the whole process of the move and not that you're going to get the same thing that you have right now and you may not like the neighborhood as well as you do right now with the park right across the street from you so if you can uh, do more with what you have now that's what you're trying to accomplish and I understand that and I think the bylaw kind of addresses that under uh, 732 so uh, I don't really have uh, any difficulties with the proposal, to tell you the truth. Thank you, John. Eric. Um, I think that the correct performance standard <clears throat> is a special permit under 7.3.2. Um, I wasn't sure where we were getting, um, you know, needing to, to get a variance from the section 6.3 since it's already a pre-existing legal non-conforming uh, structure, which is the whole point of 7.3. And in my opinion, I don't think that you're increasing the non-conformity and that, you know, what you're doing isn't more you know, substantially detrimental than what's already there. So I don't have a problem uh, with the project and that's all I've got. Glenn, tell you why he thought you should go for variance? I will tell you this. It was the day before he left on vacation, and he told me I needed a special permit. So I think it was just confused when he was writing the paperwork up fairly quickly, to tell you the truth. So that that's really why it was, I, I, for personally, that's how I think it, because he was, we were trying to get this in to be here tonight. I right. don't know if he told you, Kristen, but yeah. it was the hour or a couple of hours before he left for it. Vacation. Understood. So, as I'm as I'm looking at, you know, seven point four, we would have to make a determination if, if, just to put the variance issue to bed for a minute, the board would have to make a finding, I guess, or or decide amongst ourselves that this applicant was creating a new nonconformity. And I, I don't, this is not a new nonconformity as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I'm, so I, and again, you know, maybe we chalk it up to, you know, Scrivener's error or, uh, you know, some mischaracterization of it. But, but I, I think this is a prime candidate uh, for consideration under the special permit standards of 732. And um, so, uh, procedurally, uh, I guess we would need to, if the, if the board's determination is this is more proper for a special permit, we do have to dispose of, in some meaningful way, mm -hmm. the part of the petition that relates to the variance which I guess would require a withdrawal. Yeah. Well, 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 presuming that this board is inclined to grant a uh, special permit under 732 for what you're applying for, mm. um, then there would be no need for the board to move forward and make any determination on the variance aspect of it. However, because it's in the posting and part of the application, we would want to dispose of it by withdrawal. By withdrawal. Okay. All right. Just, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page uh, procedurally. Okay. Um, I think that uh, making a finding at this particular point, that uh, at this particular st point in the in the process, making a finding that the board felt it was more appropriate 
um, under 732 than uh, hearing the case under uh, a variance requirement? Uh, I'd like to hear from, I'd like to open up the public discussion. I think you're right. I think as part of perhaps our vote, we'll do it all at once. Mm -hmm. um, we'll open up to, to public oh, comment. Oh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm just. And then, and I think you're right. I think, you know, we can start by, by or maybe even do it as part of the part of a motion. Um, yes. I can, I we can, can do it, we can do it a myriad of different ways okay. to, to dispose of it and make it organized yep. and, and put it on the record, mm -hmm. put a finding on the record. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, there were so many nice patient people who raised their hand <laughs> to be sworn in, and so with that in mind, I'm going to open the matter up to any public comment. Is there any person that would like to speak uh, on this application? When you do, if you do, please uh, stand up, identify yourself by name and address, uh, and we'd be happy to hear you. My name is John Cortez. I live at 57 Harrison Street, so I'm the abutter uh, to Melanie Carson's house. And so Melanie was kind enough to share the, the plans and go over them with me. So I just want to say I have no objections to this uh, construction at all. Most of the uh, uh, construction is on the other side or all of it, uh, away from my side of the house. And it's conforming on my side. It maintains the 15-foot setback, and the height of the house is the same. Um, I spent substantial time in that home caring for the elderly couple that lived there before Melanie uh, bought that house, and I can attest to the fact that it's very small, very crowded, and it's really kind of needs for a growing family more space. So I'm in support for a petition. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm on David Mastronati at 49 Harrison Street. I'm on the other side, um, the side of the non-conforming lot. And just for the record, I have a letter stating that I'd support uh, the construction, if that may do. Sure. And um, simply that, uh, they have a growing family, and uh, I think it's a good project. M-A-S-T-R-O-N-A-R-D-I. Because I know that's how you spelled it when he said it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. That's how that I'm from myself. Okay, right. thank you, sir. All right. Uh, anybody? Thank you. Anybody else want to speak to the application? All right. Before we close the uh, the public hearing portion, we'll add to the record letter dated May 12, 2018, from David Mastronardi, who just spoke in support. We have a letter dated April 26th from John Cortez um, in support of the project. We also had in the file presented to us tonight a letter dated May 3rd, 2018 from a Chris and Tom McGrath uh, of 39 Harrison Street uh, and seems to be in support of the application. Those are part of the record. Um, all right. Any other questions, comments from the board? Okay. Uh, I think it probably makes sense for us to put it to a vote. So, uh, in connection with making a finding, well, I suppose we should first start by taking a vote on the special permit aspect of the application. And chime in if you think it's not the right thing to do, but this is how I see it. Let's vote on the special permit aspect of the application. As part of the special permit motion, we could include in the language of the motion a finding that uh, 732 is applicable. Right, that the, the project is, it appears to be warranted under 7. Point right, unless you, want, unless you guys want to do it differently. Yeah. Uh, no, I would. Uh, depending upon the outcome of that vote, uh, that vote, if that vote is an upvote, 
then the next vote would be, well, the next conversation with the applicant would be, uh, would they like to withdraw the application for a variance and then a vote on that? Better way to do it? Okay. No. Go ahead. I have a question. Did the applicant even apply for a variance? It was um, noticed in the paper. Yeah, it, it, it was noticed, but... I don't know if it's in the application. Well, and, and, and right, and right. so I know uh, it's kind of a catch twenty two where, where it's been published we'll in the notice. Yeah, yeah we'll withdraw it. That's I, I mean, yeah, it, that's technically, right. it's not part of your application, but because it's in the public notice, yeah. and I think we want to conform Just with kind of that to absolutely. rule out any avenues of appeal no that, because yeah. the decision might be defective in some procedural, technical, or yeah. nitpicky way that we ought to just belt and suspenders it and do it that way. Perfect. Okay. All right. With that in mind, I will entertain a motion from a board member. Anybody? Nobody? I'll take it. All right. Eric. Um, I move to approve the petition of Melanie Carlson, who seeks a special permit in accordance with Reading Bylaw 6.3 and 7.3. Uh, in order to remove an existing garage and to construct a new two-story addition, 15 feet by 43.6 feet, which is 10.1 feet uh, from the side yard uh, property line at the property located at 53 Harrison Street, Reading, Mass., all as depicted on a certified plot plan dated April 18, 2018, prepared and stamped by John T. John D. Sullivan III, uh, professional engineer, and architectural renderings noted as sheets one through ten, prepared by Twomey Design. I further move that the board make a finding that the uh, appropriate. Uh, here. Standard of yeah, review. Yeah, that's appropriate. Thank you, Dave. Uh, standard of review is a special permit pursuant to 7.3.2 uh, rather than a variance. And we will make the special permit conditioned upon the following. The petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And the petitioner shall submit as-built plans to the building inspector showing the completed construction immediately after work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Before we call for a second, would you consider removing the, the in that first line of your motion uh, under you said under six three and seven three two mm -hmm. would you consider removing the six three aspect of it and pick it up I, on the I'm happy to do that I had only included the six point three because that's what it was published under yeah. and that's the relief that they actually requested in their application well I leave we it up. can <coughs> we can they kind of walk hand in hand because we're interpreting 732 under the under the table of dimensional controls. Six, I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, ex except that it's it's what they've asked for. And Not that's necessarily the what they've and asked for. And, and that, so in, 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 in that in, in that standard. Um, as, I, as I said, I've never, in my years, I've never had a special permit on a dimensional control. So I would, when we group those two together, I don't think they are consistent. I'm so, really nervous but, because that's what it says here. It's your motion. I feel so like we'll build in, I, I feel more comfortable built in suspense. Okay. That's okay. All. All right, so then I withdraw. Right. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion on the table. Do we have a second? Second. Robert, second. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of the motion? None opposed? Your special permit is granted, 500. Zero, zero. Um, 
and hold on because we then need to the applicant would like to make a request to withdraw with prejudice without prejudice without prejudice okay Thank you. just in case just in case uh, so we have a request from the applicant to withdraw the variance aspect of the published notice I guess right. application uh, and we'll take a motion to approve the request for withdrawal without prejudice So moved. moved. Okay. Yeah. Eric. Second, Robert. Any discussion on the motion to withdraw without prejudice? Hearing none, all those in favor? Five zero zero, that portion of your application is withdrawn. All right. I think we got from A to B. I think we did. And I will stamp your plot plan and your elevation drawings. Hold on for a minute. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Thank Thanks very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Try to belt and suspend it when you write it up. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because. I understand. Yeah. You're the, you're the attorney. I know. <laughs> Get it out. Plenty of time for board comp. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> no. You're, you're you have got, got nothing else to do but write decisions. Sure, there are copious amounts of spare time, I know. I think this one in particular, you know, board comments would be appropriate. <laughs> Nancy, you're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to put those in the file. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. All right, we have a couple of sets of minutes. I don't know if anybody or everybody's had a chance to look at them.
the uh, the March 29th. That's the, that's the 40B. Right. March 29th. I have no comment. Anybody? March 29th. 29. Yeah, I miss. It. You don't have them. I, I miss not. Which one would you like, Joe? Twenty nine. Get one in the packet tonight. Ah, which I didn't get to read, I guess. Okay. I looked at the others. Yeah, I got one. Oh, okay. You want it? Yes, please. While he's doing that, you want to go to the, uh, the April 18th minutes? Kristen, just, I got a couple, you know, I'll John read through that. Okay. Um, page three, uh, third paragraph down, paragraph that starts, Mr. Redfern questioned. Mm -hmm. Town Council is S-E-L. Paragraphs down it starts with Mr. Hagstrom stated he really liked the project. Mm -hmm. Aside from catching my uh, clear enthusiasm <laughs> with your punchy prose, <laughs> the last sentence um, he stated that this is where he is at initially, rather than he stated that is where is at initially. Just need to throw the, the pronoun in there. Mm -hmm.
Good. All right. Motion to approve the minutes of March 29th, 2018. So moved. Second. Robert, Second. all those in favor? Motion to approve the minutes of April 18th, 2018 as amended. So moved so by moved. Robert. Second. Second. By Eric. All those in favor? Minutes are approved. Anything anybody want to talk about? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I uh, spoke with uh, Gene uh, Delios today, uh, actually yesterday, um, just in reference to what has been happening in the 40B. Um, and there was a meeting between the um, development team and the Neighbors, uh, and Boreano and being one of the individuals present, and the um, development team rolled out a, a, a new uh, proposal um, to the people who were present, uh, which I I'm not sure who was present. I'm not going to get into that. I just want to give you a quick synopsis in that that there is a substantial change in the proposal that's being made. Um, I asked Gene if she would get in touch with uh, Jesse uh, and Ted um, so that uh, we would have, we, the board, would have access to those proposals um, ASAP because as the board had mentioned that evening, the last time we met, which was on May 2nd, 4th. Mm. May 2nd, I think it was. May 2nd. Um, the board had indicated that uh, since transparency was a key term being used, that the transparency needs to extend to the board as, as well, since it was this board that had to make the final decision uh, on the project, and we need to know that in advance, not the, not the night of, nor the week prior to the night of. Um, so, uh, that I don't know uh, unless Andrew can give us a uh, I don't have an update whether that has been transmitted in uh, digital format so that it can be brought up I asked for it to be given to the board uh, not in the large form but at least in the eight, eight, eight and a half by 14 format so that we could see what was being done um, unless you wanted to add something in addition to that, Andrew? So they just haven't sent us official plans yet. What they presented at the meeting was quick renderings of what is now being proposed. So they're working on getting the full scale, everything finalized, done. We gave them the deadline of June 28th to submit everything. So they st said that that is still their goal and should definitely be possible. Um, but we should, I'm expecting probably sooner than that. So as soon as we get them, we will certainly send them out to you guys. Well, I was very adamant about um, the board getting at least the unofficial. Okay. Uh, proposal that was rolled out so that we can see what's happening. Okay. Um, and um, you can tell me that uh, it appears that the fund has been, the account has been funded and we can, we will be moving forward on <coughs> the traffic period? Right. Correct. Okay. They had some concerns with the price, I believe, but it's being settled or has been settled. So the peer review is underway. Okay. And now I understand it was, it's going to be tomorrow. For? For one of the dates, and the other date was going to be the Saturday. Right, I believe so. So their traffic engineer has also been in contact with the peer reviewers to review tomorrow and Saturday, I believe you're correct. And that will be uh, on What's the term? It'll be visual, actual visual uh, counts right, taken it'll be data. rather than yep. data taken from uh, mm -hmm. state uh, nope. studies. Own traffic counts. That's all I have to report. I haven't even seen it. Yeah. I did tell. I, I did express to Gene 
the uh, the board's concern that uh, the workshops that they're having is fine and, and that's great transparency is there but the reality is uh, that this board needs to know since they're making the final decision okay and we don't want to be on the outside looking in right uh, as we move down because there are other peer evaluations that have to be made okay I'll email Jesse and see if I can get basically what I have here same type of renderings so okay. and see if they can at least forward us those since they, I know they have them so they yes ASAP if possible right yeah. okay yeah, it's you know as Andrew said, it's true. Anything we get is it's not an official submittal. Right. I mean, this is kind of the way they talked about it. I believe the applicant did then uh, was they, they were going to have another workshop meeting, as you said, and there may be subsequent meetings after that even. So it's a, it's a work in progress. This whole thing until I think mm -hmm. there is a second mm -hmm. official submittal. Right. Uh, yeah, I think there is, and I I, I talked to Gene about this too. I think in terminology, if you want to look at definitions, there's a difference between a workshop and a negotiation. Mm -hmm. The workshop is one thing. The only people in negotiations are the board, mm -hmm. the representation, and staff members. Okay. It is not the neighborhood. Right. Because that that final decision right. is going to come down there. Right. And and in in, in deference to, to Gene, she was very much uh, in tune with that too, mm -hmm. so. I would certainly agree 100%. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had to do on my, on my report. Okay. Uh, nothing else necessarily to share, so we'll take a motion to adjourn. Uh, so moved. Uh, so okay, John. before we do it, I'll, I'll just know oh. that. No, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll just know that there's any, any news. I'll just note that I'm going to be going in next week for an interview to extend my uh, stay on the board for another three years. Great. Mine is, mine is put off until at least, I think, the end of May. Uh, but I did indicate a desire to return to the board if I can. Okay. I'll, um, yeah, go ahead. Somebody made a motion. To All right, so it. we make the motion. We had to withdraw it so you could talk about it. Okay. okay. So moved. So moved. John, second. Second. Robert, all those in favor? 500. Zero zero. We're adjourned. Oh, okay. Thanks, everybody.